Happy Sunshine family. Lunacy is back. We've got a video today on the Smith Mud Act of 1948. I've got Wolfgang Halbig's pictures up here because I feel that the Smith Mud Act of 1948 may play a big role in the types of observations that Wolfgang is uncovering with the various school shootings around our country. Up here at uh, OccupyCorporatism.com, I'll leave a link in the description down below. This article was dated July 22nd, 2013. How the NDAA allows U.S. government to use propaganda against Americans. The U.S. government has unbound legal re excuse me, legal regulations against using propaganda against foreign audiences and American citizens. The intention is to sway public opinion by using television, radio, newspapers, and social media targeting the American and foreign people in controlled psyops. The newest version of the National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, has an amendment added that negates the smith munt Act of 1948, SMA for short, and the Foreign Relations Authorization Act of 1987. These laws made propaganda used to influence foreigners and U.S. citizens illegal. Without these laws, disinformation could run rampant through our information junkets. This amendment added to the NDAA has passed into implementation as of this month. And we're talking July, tw we're talking July of 2013, and it was repealed on July 2nd. Now I want you to think about that. July 2nd, 2013, the smith Mud Act of 1948 was repealed. This is just about six months after the Sandy Hook shooting. The SMA defines the prohibition of domestic access to influence information through a variety of means from broadcast to publishing books, media, and online sources by restricting the State Department. The Broadcasting Board of Governors, so this is a new organization here was created from the smith mud Act. This agency claims to, quote, inform, engage, and connect people around the world in support of freedom and democracy. They omit that their specialty is making sure propaganda is added to the information flow that we all depend upon. The amendment sanctions the U.S. government without restriction the use of any mode of message to control how we perceive our world. This is all about the power structure authoring the perceptions that you hold in your head. And this is very important because it is our perceptions that guide our behavior. If you control somebody's perception, the byproduct is you control that person's behavior. As of now, the level of propaganda in mainstream media is quite high, with all of our television, printed media, and internet sites associated with the MSN owned, oh, oh, excuse me, I'm tripping over my tongue, owned only by five corporations. Without these laws, the lies pervade us truth to foreigners would find their way to our doorsteps as a purposeful operation enacted by our government. And in the name of national security, the U.S. could and probably would disseminate misinformation to gain public support for otherwise decidedly deplorable operations. Now, this next line is really interesting. Amendment 114 of the NDAA was approved by the House in May of 2012. So six or seven months before the Sandy Hook shooting, this amendment 
to repeal the Smith-Mudd Act, among other things, was approved by the House. And it was about a year later, in July of 2013, that it became official. So let's take a look at the actual verbiage that was in the smith munt Modernization Act of 2012. Or excuse me, this is the new verbiage. Section 501A, the Secretary and the Broadcasting Board of Governors are authorized to use funds appropriated or otherwise made available for public diplomacy information programs to provide for the preparation, dissemination, and use of information intended for foreign audiences abroad about the United States, its people, and its policies through the press, publications, radio, motion pictures, the internet, and other information media, including social media, and through information centers, instructors, and other direct or indirect means of communication. That's blanket. That's a blanket coverage. They are allowed to lie to whoever they want through whatever means they want for whatever purpose. Paragraph B, subsection 1, except as provided in paragraph 2, which I don't see listed in this article, the Secretary and the Broadcasting Board of Governors may, upon request and reimbursement of the reasonable costs incurred in fulfilling such a request, make available in the United States motion pictures, films, video, audio, and other materials prepared for dissemination abroad or disseminated abroad. According to Michael Hastings, quote, the new law would give sweeping powers to the State Department and Pentagon to push television, radio, newspaper, and social media onto the U.S. public. Quote, it removes the protection for Americans, says Pentagon official who is concerned about the law. It removes oversight from the people who want to put out this information. There's no checks and balances. No one knows if the information is accurate, partially accurate, or entirely false. Representatives Mac Thornberry, Republican of Texas, and Adam Smith, Democrat, Washington, in the smith munt Modernization Act of 2012, House Resolution 5736, advocate that it's time to liberate the authority of the U.S. government to broadcast American-produced foreign propaganda in the U.S., Wow, if either of these two are your representatives, they deserve an earful. The amendment, which was hidden within the NDAA, has remained relatively unnoticed. However, it empowers the State Department and Pentagon to utilize all forms of media against the American public for the sake of coercing U.S. citizens to believe whatever version of the truth the U.S. government wants them to believe. All oversight is removed by Amendment 114. That's important. All oversight is removed by Amendment 114. Regardless of whether the information disseminated is truthful, partially truthful, or completely false, bears no weight. Bears no weight. How... Off the deep end is this, guys. Thornberry believes that with the use of the Internet by terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, the federal government needs to have freedom to circulate their own propaganda to combat terrorism effectively. Well, I'm sure most of the Lunacy family has dug into the World Trade Center 9-11 attacks and uh, has come across the information that Al-Qaeda appears to have been started by the CIA itself. This is how lies beget lies and the trail paved to taking away our freedoms is entirely based upon us believing lies. And now they have told you in writing, in Amendment 114 of the NDAA of 2012, that they're going to lie to you. Any way, anyhow, tell you whatever they want through any means. Quote, 
I just don't want to see something this significant, whatever the pros and cons, go through without anyone noticing, says one source on the Hill, who is disturbed by the law. According to this source, the law would allow, quote, U.S. propaganda intended to influence foreign audiences to be used on the domestic population. Four billion dollars per year is spent by the Pentagon on propaganda aimed at the American public. Wow. I wonder what Hollywood's budget per year is collectively. As well as the 202 million spent by the by the Department of Defense on misinformation operations in Iraq and Afghanistan in 2011. Currently, the Pentagon is using sock puppet or fake accounts on social media sites to purvey false information, harass users, and enact psyops to influence Americans. A California corporation is working with the U.S. Central Command or CENTCOM and spreading propaganda overseas. They provide online persona management service that allows active duty military to set up an estimated 10 different false identities that are used worldwide. Each of these fake personas comes complete with a background history and safeties to prevent, quote, sophisticated adversaries, end quote, from discovering the lie. CENTCOM spokesman, Commander Bill Speaks said, that's a funny name for a spokesman, huh? Last name is Speaks. We see so many plays on people's names versus their positions. He says, quote, the technology supports classified blogging activities on foreign language websites to enable CENTCOM to counter violent extremist and enemy propaganda outside the U.S., Sophisticated software allows the military to engage in online conversations with coordinated answers, blog comments, and instant messaging remarks that are solely meant to spread pro-American propaganda. And you know what? I I take exception how they say pro-American here, because what it's really saying is pro-United States, United States being in all caps, i.e., the corporation of the United States. It's pro-United States propaganda, pro-corporation propaganda. America refers to the men and women who reside within the geographic boundaries known as the continental United States. American is different than United States, the corporation. U.S. Army whistleblower Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis believes there is a definitive aspiration within the U.S. government to, quote, enable public affairs officers to influence American public opinion when they deem it necessary to, quote, protect a key friendly center of gravity to wit U.S. national will. So this protect a key friendly center of gravity. That center of gravity is a common shared perception that all of this propaganda is authoring inside the target's psyches. Edwin Bernays would be proud. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Ed, Edwin, excuse me, Edward Bernays, let me pop up a, another page here. He is often referred to as the father of propaganda. So everything that we're seeing here today with all of this obviously fake news coming out of our mainstream media, it all had its start, at least on paper, with Edwin Bernays. And so six years ago, the U.S. government put in writing legislation that says that they're going to lie to you about anything through any informational conduit or channel that they want. And there are no checks and balances to determine whether or not this information is completely accurate, partly accurate, or a complete lie. Now, when the waters of truth 
and rational discourse are muddied by so many lies, the only way to find the truth is to investigate the claims and make the underlying core observations that these claims are about. And there's just no way to do that with the news the way it's reported now. That's what Wolfgang Halbig's been running into. They've made a lot of claims about every aspect of the Sandy Hook shooting. And the observations that a man like Wolfgang Halbig can make and that just about any of us can listen to him and go make those observations ourselves, they fly in the face of the official narrative. Now, we really can't say exactly what happened at Sandy Hook, but we can say what didn't happen. And there's a lot of things that didn't happen that should have happened according to normal operating procedures. The normal operating procedures, the standard protocols for how to respond to active shooters, all the way up through whether or not we're going to release public documents like death records, or even the FBI's own statistics for homicide for the year of 2012 for Newton, Connecticut, show zero homicides. How does that happen? We're left with a mess to pick through. And I really feel that the repealing of the Smith-Mudd Act of 1948 is inextricably tied to the level of deception that we're uncovering in the mainstream media. And Sandy Hook is but just one facet of the deception, one manifestation of propaganda. And all of these pieces of propaganda all weave together to form a matrix. If you believe what's being put out by your government, then you've got no other perception in your head about what happened and that controls your behavior. In order to first reclaim your power so that your, your life energy, your spiritual energy, the, all the behaviors that you naturally would have chosen throughout the various portions in your life is altered when you believe any type of lie. And with so many lies, propaganda seeks to take us away from the natural life path that we would choose for ourselves. Well, I'm getting really excited to interview Wolfgang Halbid if you've got any questions that you'd like me to address with him, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, -E, at protonmail.com. I love you guys a lot. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye.